In this episode, we're going to start talking about some graph algorithms uh, that are used to manipulate and compute um, various uh, metrics and other things um, pertaining to graphs. So, the three kinds of um, graph algorithms that we'll look at um, here initially are traversal and search, short path, shortest path algorithms, and graph metrics. Um, in later episodes, so in this episode we'll, we'll look specifically at traversal and search. Next episode we'll look at shortest path algorithms, then we'll look at graph metrics, and then later we'll look at some things called, um, this thing called a spanning tree or a minimum spanning tree, which uh, gives us other information about a graph. Okay, so just as with tree traversals, graph traversals come in basically two forms. The first being a depth-first search, and the second being breadth-first search. The idea with these types of uh, traversals is that you're given some vertex, we want to find all the vert vertices that are reachable from it. Um, and this has many applications. You can use breadth-first search and depth-first search for finding specific nodes within a graph. So for instance, let's say that I have um, I want to find a certain value in a graph, a specific node. I can use breadth-first search or depth-first search to find those nodes. Uh, the other thing that uh, these search algorithms do uh, when uh, sort of the, uh, the general algorithm is, is that it allows you to find things called connected components. So a connected component in a graph is basically um, a list of nodes as well as edges that um, connect vertices to each other. So uh, you can have uh, basically disconnected graphs. Uh, bas the idea behind a disconnected graph, as we've seen earlier, is that you can have parts of the graphs that um, aren't connected to each other. So there, there's a lack of edges that um, can be used to traverse from one part of the graph to the next part of the graph. So what a uh, breadth-first search or a depth-first search or any of these traversals will allow you to do is find the connected components. So given, given a node, find all, the, find all of the other nodes that are reachable from that node. Uh, and if you ever have a graph where you've got these, um, uh, these traversals where you can't reach a node, um, that means that you have disconnected components. Okay, so the, the concept behind uh, DF, uh, DFS search or depth-first search uh, is that you want to be able to uh, initially find, or sorry, you, what you want to be able to do is traverse as deeply as possible down a path uh, until you find all the nodes. So with depth-first search, initially uh, all the nodes are marked as not visited. Uh, you start with marking a node as visited, then visit one of its unvisited neighbors. Uh, you then mark that node as visited, and then add the edge to the result set, and then repeat. So if you ever get to the point where you're trying to traverse to a node that's already been visited, you just go ahead and skip that, that node and move on to the next edge. When you get to the point where you've visited all the neighbors of a particular node, you then back up um, until you either or back to the beginning, or uh, you back up to the next uh, node that you can actually visit. So this little animation that um, is shown here, uh, you start in node A, and you traverse first to node C, then to node F. You try A, but A has already been visited, so you go to D. From D, to you go to B, and then finally you go to E. And then the algorithm uh, at least the one that's implemented in the textbook, uh, will then switch to the next node that has been unvisited and try to connect or try to find um, all, its, all, of its, um, <coughs> all of the nodes that are in its neighborhood as well. Um, <coughs> in the case of this graph here, G is disconnected from the other parts of the graph, um, so uh, it has, uh, or it is not the member of any particular component except for the component that it includes itself. Uh, so, anyway, so the resulting DFS walk for this graph would be 
the edge AC, the edge CF, the edge FD, the edge DB, and finally the edge BE. So the algorithm for the depth first search, which um, you'll find in chapter 8 of the text, has basically two parts. Uh, the part on the left is basically um, sort of the encapsulating um, method or encapsulating um, uh, algorithm. Really the important part of the algorithm is shown on the right part of this slide. But basically what this does or what this algorithm does is it marks each of the vertices has an attribute that is essentially saying whether or not the vertex has been uh, has been visited already, and so it basically sets it to zero initially. Uh, creates an empty set uh, of edges, and then sets a value of i equal to one. i is going to be used to mark each one of the nodes. Um, and then, uh, basically, it checks to see whether or not there's been a vertex that hasn't been visited yet, and if it hasn't, then it performs uh, or attempts to perform a depth for search starting at that vertex. The interesting part of this algorithm is really here on the right, uh, and it is a recursive algorithm. As a matter of fact, it's a tail recursive algorithm. And the way that this works is it says, okay, given a node V, um, first market is visited, um, and increment I. This incrementation here is used in the textbook. We could actually just mark this with any arbitrary number that isn't zero. It doesn't have to be an increment. Uh, and then for each of these, so for all the vertices that are adjacent to V, uh, what happens is that uh, if the vertex U has not been visited, then the edge from V to U is added to the edge set, which will be our result set. And then a recursive call to do a depth first search starting from U is made. Now, what this uh, all assumes is that the um, the edge set here is sort of global so that you know, when you do this DFS search that um, it knows about this edge set. Also, it assumes that this, um, this counter I is, is global so that it can also be incremented. Um, and so the way that this algorithm works then is just like um, we saw in the previous slide where uh, you first uh, mark a node as visited, um, then you look at its, its neighbors, uh, you take the first neighbor that hasn't been visited, you visit that node, um, and you add the edge that connects the current vertex to that, uh, to that unvisited vertex, uh, and then you do this recursive call to DFS. Now, the uh, application of the DFS algorithm, um, as I um, shown earlier, sort of results in the following tree, or sorry, the following um, components. Although this technically this is a tree, uh, but uh, and and actually, um, uh, when you create a DFS or a BFS, any of these walks, they do create trees because of the nature of how they back up and the fact that you aren't visiting nodes multiple times. Um, but anyway, so the resulting um, tree that we get from doing a DFS um, is A, C, F, D, B, and E, and then with G being unconnected. Now, <clears throat> if you change the order in which you first visit nodes, so if instead, of a, uh, instead of visiting A first, let's say I visited F first, uh, that will change the um, the way that or the nodes that are included. Well, sorry, not the nodes, but the edges that are included in the um, in the DFS walk or the results of the DFS algorithm. Uh, so, for instance, if we started with F first, um, I could visit I could visit C. Um, actually, if we started with let's say let's say we started with B first. I could visit E, then D, then F, uh, uh, then A, then C. So uh, anyway, so the order actually matters. And, and what I did to generate this tree here in the bottom is I ran the algorithm on a program. And um, 
what happened was that it did a spanning, uh, I uh, changed the order in which uh, nodes were visited. Actually, I think I went in reverse order with this. So first tried to visit G, and then visited F, and then went in reverse order. So um, I'm trying to think of how this would have actually come up to look like this particular tree if we were doing depth first search. Uh, we would have had to have visited, um, oh, let's see, we would have had this uh, perhaps visited A first, and then F, and then gone in this direction, D, B, and E, uh, sorry, D, E, and B, and then run out of nodes to be able to visit, and then backed up to F, and then visited C. That's likely the most, that's the li most likely scenario as to how this tree was uh, was computed. If we started from B, we would have done pretty much the same kind of walk that we had done uh, before. Although, if we started with B, we could get to F, visit A. No, that wouldn't work because we'd visit F, then A, then C, um, based on what the original graph looks like. So, most likely what happens, we start with A, uh, traverse to F, then to D, E, and B, and then back up and traverse to C. Anyway, so what we get with um, doing both these DFS walks, whatever it is, ends up being, uh, we get to what are called spanning trees. And what spanning trees are, are trees that result from doing these uh, DFS searches uh, that span the entire graph, so visit all of the nodes in the graph. And that's assuming, of course, it was that the graphs are dis that are that the graphs are connected, but even if they're disconnected, what you would end up getting is a forest of trees. So you'd have multiple trees, um, all of which sort of span uh, or visit all of the nodes in the graph. So if you ever want to try to visit all of the nodes and you need to visit all the nodes, let's say that you need to, um, you know, let's say that the the nodes contain values. Um, or, you know, some integer value and you wanted to visit all of the nodes so that you could sum up all of the values in the entire tree, then you would use something like a DFS to visit every single node. Now, the other type of traversal algorithm that I want to talk about is the, is the breadth-first search, which again is similar to the breadth-first search that we had in the, um, in the case of the trees. This algorithm is actually implemented in much the same way that breadth first search was implemented in trees using a queue. So the idea here is that, again, we do some initial setup. We mark all the vertices as being unvisited, initialize the result set. And then what you do is uh, you find the first vertex that hasn't been visited, uh, mark it as visited, then enqueue it onto the queue. And then check to see, then go to the queue and say, well, uh, you know, while this queue is not empty, set V equal to the element, first element on the queue, and then visit all of the things that are adjacent to that vertex that's on the queue. So uh, what this effectively would do then is take all the children or all of the things that are connected to a particular node, add it to a queue, and then go all the way through the queue and visit those things first before visiting um, or before going deeper into the graph. So looking again at this diagram here, if we were starting at A, we would first visit C, F, and D. Um, and then from there we would visit B and then E. So what's happening here with this algorithm is that we start with A, uh, that gets enqueued, then, then the neighbors of that get enqueued. So C, F, then D. And then we visit those in order. So we visit A, then visit C, then F, then D. And then, uh, then the queue will be, uh, uh, will be empty. Uh, and then so we will we'll go through that algorithm in NQ, both B and E. Uh, the last thing that gets visited is G. Um, but uh, G, of course, doesn't, isn't connected to anything. So it doesn't, uh, <coughs> it doesn't have any edges related to it. Now, the breadth-first search will typically, but not necessarily, find shorter paths. Uh, the reason of this is because since it's not going as deep as possible and, and rather just going one step at a time from the original node, 
um, it, uh, it's possible that all of the nodes will be visited before we go deeply into the tree or into the graph. So, for instance, the re resulting graph here has at most um, two edges um, between, any, between A and the end of the tree, whereas in the previous example, you know, we had gone um, six nodes deep um, in finding the, um, uh, the depth for search walk. Okay, so anyway, that, um, those are the major uh, traversal algorithms for graphs, the breadth-first search and the depth-first search. Again, they're, <clears throat> they're very similar to the, to the depth-first search and the breadth-first search for trees, the difference here being that we have graphs, and so there are a few more edges than uh, in the previous case. Anyway, that concludes this episode. The next episode, we'll talk about shortest path algorithms.